Good morning, good morning, good morning. Who's ready for a walk with me? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, Jesus. Walk with me, Lord. Come on and walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey. Good morning. I need Jesus mm -hmm, to walk with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of us, how are you doing this beautiful, beautiful Thursday? Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. How are you doing? I pray you slept well. I pray you have gotten up and got in your word this morning. Pray you got up and meditated this morning or got on prayer lines or took your calls, whatever you do in the morning time. I have done so. Amen. Um, it's what I do every morning. Amen. <laughs> Get up and spend some time with God before I move. Hallelujah. Before my feet hit the ground, I make sure that my mind is stayed on the Lord. Amen. So that my body and this flesh will act according to or carry out according to what God is asking me to do. Hallelujah. Good morning. How are you doing, cousin? Hallelujah. So I, if you're just coming on, I want you to like and share this post. Amen. Like and share this post. Uh, I know it sound like, like you like, she sound draggy. I'm not groggy. I just, I'm excited this morning. Amen. Excited about some things that God has been showing me in this word. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And my intimate time with him. Hallelujah. Cause I'm telling you. God is doing something very miraculous in this season and many can't see it, but you will, <laughs> you will. So we're talking about a walk with me. Amen. I come to encourage you. I've come to speak blessings over you. Hallelujah. Grateful for the opportunity God has given me to write this book. Amen. It's coming out of my latest new book, Walk With Me, 30 Days to Be Transformed. I am giving you nuggets that I learned uh, through me. Uh, that I learned on my walk. This particular journal, uh, Walk With Me, will have se actually several different uh, versions of this book will come out. This is just the one. Uh, these are journals that I keep when God correct me, edify me, or tell me something about my life. I have a journal that I keep. Good. I keep the good, bad, and the ugly. It's necessary. It's all necessary in order for me to be who God called me to be. And so what's in this book is some of the things that God dealt with me about early on, probably my first couple years of being in Christ. That's exactly what this is. My first uh, um, uh, two journals of my salvation walk. And the first things that God dealt with me with was by mouth and the words that I allow to govern myself. How many of us know that God is concerned about us? He deals with us directly. Amen. And sometimes we get so busy at looking at other people and telling them their wrongs and their shortcomings. We forget that God is concerned about us individually and that we ourselves need to make sure that we are governing ourselves properly. So today is day nine. If you have the book, amen. If you don't, please, 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 please purchase it. I know it'll bless your life. I've gotten so many testimonies from all ages of the book uh, having some... Uh, dramatic effects on people just with reading you know i heard one testimony said just when she read the intro god broke her down and it, it brought clarity to some things that she was going through and then as she studied on she's continually to be blessed so i'm grateful for that but we're coming out we're talking about satisfying words today we're coming out of proverbs 18 and 20 now satisfying words um, when you think of satisfy, what does that make you think of? Like when you had a meal and it has been satisfying to you, like, mm, that was good. That it like settled you down. It fulfilled you. It made you feel full. You know, it, it met all the criteria of having 
the the what they say on the pyramid it had the meat it had the fruit it had the veggies it had the dairy it had every nutrients that you need so your body was satisfied well guess what words can do the same thing it can they can satisfy you they can bring you peace they can bring you comfort they can edify you they can bring correction satisfy words amen if they are said and in, in the right way in in the proper context so Proverbs 18 and 20 said, word satisfies the soul as food satisfies the stomach. The right words of a person's lips bring satisf satisfaction. So your words can bring satisfaction or they can tear a person down. We're looking to be able to satisfy, not just the person, but you. Are you satisfied with your life or where you are? Many aren't. Many of, the, of us know we're supposed to be doing things that we're not doing. Many of us know we're not in the right place. We're always looking for a miracle, but we don't want to be the miracle. They can, la, 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 go by. We don't want to be the miracle. Being the miracle means that you're allowing God to use you whenever he wants to use you and however he wants to use you. I am always looking for an opportunity to be used by God. I live my life as such. I do. And a lot of people, they don't like it, but I don't care because this is my life and I'm working out my own <laughs> soul and salvation and then as long as i'm living above reproach you can't approach me about living my life according to god's word all you can do is do what most people do and that is talk about you but you can talk but as my bird say and as my god assures me just don't let it be true amen and so since i know it's not true and who the son has set free is free indeed i am free so therefore have fun enjoy yourself because i am Living my life unto Christ, though that I may live again. So this is it. The, the word satisfying, okay? Here we go. It says, means producing pleasure or contentment, but providing what is needed. Those words can be good or evil. The grace of God makes it easy to forgive, but our, our self-corruption makes it difficult. Proverbs 12 tells us, the transgression of our lips snare the wicked, but the just shall come out of trouble. So are your lips just or are they not? Are they, are, are they, are your lips just or are they foul? Are they allowing, you know, your words to be, uh, to people to come out of trouble? Are you speaking that they can make it? Are you telling them? That they can, that God can do the miraculous? Are you speaking those th things as if they were, as the words say? Or are you speaking what you see? I never, even with my children, even when they wrong going and I have corrected them, I would say, you're going to get this right. You're going you're gonna to allow God to use you. You're going to allow God to build you up. Why am I doing, I am speaking life to the deaf situation. That is what Ezekiel did to those dry bones. They were bones, brittle. And he went into the desert and he spoke life to them bones. He brought the bones to life. Do you know your mouth have that much power? Yes, you, your mouth has that much power to speak life into someone else, a dead body. You can speak it back to life. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. You can satisfy a broken heart. You can bring healing and deliverance. Hallelujah to the dismayed and the rejected. With your mouth. Hallelujah. Do you allow that to happen though? Are you looking for it to happen? Are you trying to? Hallelujah. We try to do a lot of stuff. But are we trying to be who God wants us to be? Or are we trying to be what the mimic, the world has told us or has taught us by our culture? But you're in this world, but you're not of it. And I often say this to a lot of people. Okay. I, you're in it, but you're not of it. And the sooner you see that you don't belong here and that you're working to get to the place you belong because you are an alien, which means that you're not part of this world. You're living to live again. You're a tra you're, tr you're transcending through hallelujah. Then you will understand why I say these things. The enemy wants you to be comfortable. He wants you to feel like you live here. He wants you to feel like this is it. So that he can what? Manipulate you. He can steal your joy. He can steal your blessings. He can steal your covenant, which you are in with God. He can still kill and destroy you. That's why he wants you to believe that this is it and this is all that it is. 
But I come to tell you, no, it's not. You have a greater thing ahead of you. You're called to do great exploits for the kingdom. You're called to go out and preach the unadulterated word of Christ. You're called, hallelujah, to live exemplary life above reproach for the people so that the women and men, hallelujah, will be changed. Yes, you, you are. Let me speak life unto you. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You have beautiful eyes, beautiful hair. Hallelujah. We are hard on ourselves as people. We look in the mirror. We tear each other down. What I come to say, get out the mirror. You are feel beautifully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. And if you need to do some work, do the work. If you need to do some work on your body, do the work. But you are still fearfully and wonderfully made as you are working to tighten that body, strengthen that body. Hallelujah. Because you got to encourage your body with words. That's the satisf satisfaction that comes out of God's word or your mouth when you are speaking it. If you speak down to yourself, you're going to feel down. But if you say self, yeah, you self, we're feeling good today. We're feeling strong today. We're feeling mighty today. We can make it today. Hallelujah. Then your body will begin to fortify itself. You'll feel life coming to your body. Good morning, Angela. You will feel it. But you got to learn how to feel the first weapon you get. And I have, God has taught me this years ago. He said, you talking about when I'm going to fill you with gifts. This, this book came out of the first two years of me being saved. He said, you keep talking, praying for me for gifts. I already gave you two gifts. I gave you my word and I gave you my mouth, your mouth. And I said, you could speak life and death with it. So, why are you here praying for me for a new gift when you haven't even learned how to use the first one? Yeah, I paused. When you ain't even learned how to use the greatest gift. Because even that mouth is what's going to be used as you continue on. As you get stronger in me. As I endow you with my Holy Ghost and I, I strengthen you and quicken your spirit. Your mouth will begin to be, get stronger. Hallelujah. But you got to learn how to clean it out first. You got to fill out that defiled mouth of yours. Hallelujah. So that you can what? Command your day. Hallelujah. Command what surrounds you, your surroundings, your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Command your church to be what God has called it to be by speaking life on it. Things not right. God, you're going to come in and you're going to fix this thing now. They're going to operate according to what you say. There's going to be signs and wonders in this place. There's going to be healing in this place. There's going to be firefall teaching in this place. Hallelujah. There will be no demonic entities in this place. Glory be to God. We're going to come up in here and the enemy going to flee. Why? Because I'm in the room and I come to speak life. Hallelujah. And the devil can't operate in life. He like darkness. So if I come in the room, I am the light. Hallelujah. So I am bringing light and he's going to flee. Why? Because I'm going to resist him with my mouth. No devil, you cannot operate in here. No devil, you cannot manipulate the children. No devil, you cannot manipulate the elders. No devil, you cannot manipulate the pastor. No devil, you cannot manipulate the praise team and the worshipers. No devil, you will not cause the prayer intercessors to sleep, but they will stay on the wall and magnify and praise God and they will to Z E continuously for the people. No devil, you are not going to go through the hospitals and steal hope, uh, households and steal hope. No devil, you're not going to destroy our youth. Hallelujah, with this manipulation of the world. Because our youth are the next generation, God. And we're going to build up our children. They're going to be men and women of valor. Hallelujah. Yes, a woman can be a woman of valor, a woman of virtue. Yes, they will be that. Hallelujah. They're going to tear down your kingdom. That's why you're trying to manipulate them with all these things because you don't want them to realize who they are. But I come to tell them that this is who they are. You are a man of valor and a victorious woman and get up. Hallelujah. So God can build you up. Shake off what the world is saying. Shake off the bully mentality because that's what the enemy is doing. Hallelujah. And step into who God has ordained you to be. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. There are satisfying words in unity. Hallelujah. When you can find somebody else to agree with you. Everybody has somebody that agree with them. God created us as such. That's why he graded two by two. 
That two symbol wasn't just about a husband and a wife. That was a symbol that there's comfort in two. There's comfort in friendship. There is comfort in it. Unity. Hallelujah. But the enemy don't want you to be unified. He wants you to be isolated so he can tear you down. He can make you distraught. But I come to tell you there's a friend out there for you. Yes, it is. There's a person that God has designed especially for you that will encourage you, that will edify you, that will build you up. I come against every broken friendship right now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that God will dismantle those friends that mean you no harm, that means you no good, but they mean you harm. Hallelujah. That they will flee to the north, south, east, and west right now. And that the true friend would arise up. And that would be a person that you would have in your life for longevity. But remember, the word says you got to show yourself friendly. So if you're brokenhearted and you push people away, I've come right now to say you won't operate in such anymore. I decree and declare that you will show yourself friendly before the people. That you will stop being judgmental. That you'll stop tearing down everybody. That you won't be a gossiper. That you will uh, be what a true friend exemplify. Hallelujah. Because if you can show yourself friendly to the world, to a friend, then God can use you to evangelize to the world. People forget that. That's a small thing. He can use you to evangelize to the world when you can show yourself friendly. Why would God use you to go to the people and witness to them and you ain't a friendly person? You mean mug everybody. You look crazy. Why would God use you? He don't want to use nobody that look all broken up and jacked up. You looking at people. This your face. All the time. Who wants that? God looking for a cheerful person. Somebody that's going to smile and say, hey, how y'all doing? What's going on in here? What we doing on today? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a little goofy when I get to talking about God and being free. Amen. What y'all doing, peoples? We, we come up in here to have some fun. Let's laugh. We be too serious. We serious because the enemy want us too serious because he wants us to be in that isolation place that we'll separate because we think it's hard. It's not hard. It's simple. Speak to your surroundings. Hallelujah. Speak to your children. Don't always tell them what they doing wrong. I learned years ago. Sometimes when they doing wrong, don't even adjust the wrong. Dress the good in them. I'm not telling you not to be a mother and a father, but there's all kind of ways to parent. And always being a hard boss, the iron fist, is not going to get it. I was a kid that you couldn't iron fist me. My mom used to say it all the time to people. She would come to school if the teacher did something and they would try to hard me. She said, don't do that to her. Because when you do that to her, you make her harder. Her personality, you can't do it to her. She was like, this is what you got to do. And she did. She would come up to me and she'd be like, Zolisha? Yeah, mom. What's up? Yes, mom. I didn't say yeah, mom. Let me correct that. Yes, ma'am. That's what I said. Yes, ma'am. Because it was yes, ma'am and no, ma'am in my mama house. Don't even get it twisted, okay? Yes, ma'am. And she would say, what's going on with you? I'd be like, I don't know. You know, kids, I don't know. She would be like, I know what's wrong with you. And I would be like, what? What's wrong with me? She'd be like, I know exactly what's wrong with you. And I'd be like, What's wrong with me? Because you know you're a kid. You're like, what? She'll get my attention and she'll run up to me and she will grab me and she'll hug me and she'll be like, you need me to hug you. You need me to shake you. You need me to kiss your neck. And she would be kissing me on my neck. And I'd be like, my stop. My stop. Come on. Come on, mom. We at school. You can't be doing this. And she would be hugging and kissing on me and hugging and kissing on me and hugging and kissing on me. And then I would feel so light. And that stuff, the chaos of the day would break off of me. Would break off of me. She didn't whoop me, even though I deserved a whooping. Oh, yes, I did many of things as a kid. I was bad. B -A, I put the B to the A to the D, okay? With the high, with the explanation point. Yes, I did. I was bad, okay? But she learned, I'm not going to discipline you for everything. I need you to figure out who you're going to be. And so she would just hug and kiss me, hug and kiss me, hug and kiss me. And she would be like, and she would tell the teacher, certain things that's happened in her you. That we just, I just can't do it because certain things had happened that made me callous. And she said, don't do that with her. And so some teachers got it and some didn't. And the ones who didn't, I terrorized their room. I don't know. Just one of them kids. Sometimes that little girl be trying. I'd be like, don't do it. Don't you do that. 
We're not finna do that today. You know, when somebody do something crazy to you or say something crazy, that mischievous little girl be on the side of me like, you know you could do this to get them. And I'll be like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to let vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So go on, go on somewhere. I got something else to do. I don't got time. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So here's a testimony. Hallelujah. It's many battles. I talk about my battles that I had to. Hallelujah. Being mistreated in a marriage. Being mistreated in churches. Being mistreated by friendships. Uh, being rejected. That's something the enemy always likes to me is get, and he does this to many people. And I, and I, uh, recently, uh, apostle confirmed this on one of his posts. He was talking to me. He had called me out just to talk. And he said, he said, yes, Alicia, the enemy likes to you to, to bring broken relationships. He likes to tear you down with broken relationships since you was a little girl. And I would be like, I, 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 I could feel that because God had dealt with me on it. He confirmed what I was already writing. And he said, but that's okay. That's not your portion any longer. I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right. Because I say it every day. I'm not going to be sucked into no brokenness today. You're not going to, the accuser is not going to be dwelling in my surrounding. If it's somebody bringing up a false accusation, God is going to be swift to destroy it. Hallelujah. If you come in to turn my name down, God is going to be swift to judgment against you. I, this is what I say in the morning. If you come in to wreak havoc and keep me off my purpose of what God has called me to, God will be swift to deal with you. Why do I say that? So that my path is clear. So who am I called to re reach? Who I'm called to set free can be reached. So I'm not bombarded with the weeds of what the enemy is bringing. And I can focus on you like I'm doing on today. Amen. So speak over your life so you can be satisfied in your life. I had to learn that. That was one of my issues why I ate up everything. Why I had got almost got to 400 pounds. Because I was eating up everything because I wasn't satisfied in my life. I was hungry, but I was hungry for the wrong things. I thought it was food, but I was hungry for spirit. I was missing my spirit satisfaction. I was missing my governing relationship with God to its magnitude of which God wanted me to have. Because I was listening to other people, or should I say not listening, I was waiting for other people to tell me my worth. You can't wait for other people. You got to know that you know yourself. You got to believe in yourself. You got to talk. And I don't, and this is not a self-esteem talk because all my esteem is in God. My confidence is in the Lord. Hallelujah. I know who I am. How? Because God has assured me who I am. You don't know who you is? Read Ephesians 4 and 5. You don't know who God say you are? If you are in right relationship, read it. He will tell you who you are in Ephesians, who he is, who you are as a person in Christ. Read it. He'll tell you that you're beautiful. He'll tell you that you're wonderful. He'll tell you how much he desire you. Read Ephesians. Glory be to God. Then he'll tell you when you go further in Ephesians what you're wrestling against. And it ain't you. It's not flesh and blood. We think it's flesh and blood. We want to do this because that's what the enemy sells us. But it's not what God is doing. Amen. Everything in our life is about who God is trying to make us become in that moment. He's steady cultivating us. He's steady changing us. He's steady shaping and polishing us to get to our final destination of who we are. Guess what? You will never get there though to your final until you get in his presence. Because that, that should be your final destination. It's in his presence saying, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what should you be your final. But if you're looking to receive it on this world, you will get a whole lot of well done, but you won't get a faithful servant. You won't get it from God. Because if you're trying to be well in man's eyes, let me tell you about what the words say about man. Man is fickle. Man will, man will lift you up one day and tear you down in the next. So your confidence got to be in God and not man. Your confidence got to be in God and not yourself. Hallelujah. You are using the tools, but you are not idol worshiping them because God turned down idols. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying satisfied work. I be, the food became an idol to me because I thought I was hungry all the time. I wasn't hungry. Nothing was wrong with me. Put that, put that burger down. Put them chips and cookies down. And I start worshiping more. I start praying more. I start being in God's presence more. And that started blessing me. The more I was in his presence, 
So right now I want to pray for some people. Hallelujah. Because I already feel the fire coming up on me. Hallelujah. If you are dissatisfied in your life, maybe you're dissatisfied with your body. I pray right now that God will give you a plan for your body, for you to lose weight. Hallelujah. Like he did me. I pray that he will give you a satisfied taste bud in the, in the sense of that you won't be satisfied for the things of this world, but you will be hungry for his word. Sometimes when you're hungry, it's your spirit needing food, nourishment in this, not the plate. So I always ask myself, if I get hungry, is this a natural hunger or a spiritual hunger? And I believe that somebody else on here, you've been hungry and you think it's food. Like, dang, I can't get satisfied. It's not food. It's a spiritual hunger. God is taking you to a new place. He's trying to introduce you who he is. And you need to get in his word. You need to get in a deeper relationship. You need to pray more. Hallelujah. You need to spend more quiet time with your notebook. So he can give you some plans for your life. I do that constantly. I have a lot of quiet time. I turn my phone off and I have my notebook open. And I'm just listening for God. Why? Because that's who I depend on. I don't depend on a teacher. I don't depend on a preacher. I depend on my heavenly father. He's the only one all knowing. Hallelujah. And I pray that for you. I decree and I declare that you would depend on God. To be your source and not a resource. Everything in this world is a resource. The church is a resource to help you be on sharp and iron. Friendship is a resource to help you bring comfort to your life. Husband and wives are resources. Hallelujah. But they're not your source of all things for your body. Only God is. God is your source. Hallelujah. So if you are lacking something, go to the source. Hallelujah. If you eating out of control, because that's what COVID been doing to a lot of people, then go to the source. God, what is it that I'm hungry for? Because this is a period that you're supposed to be in God, spending more time. Maybe instead of running to the kitchen, run to the floor, fall on the floor and say, God, I need you in a new way. My body is hungry and longing for you. Hallelujah. I need you to come in right now. Rest, rule, and abide in this place, God. I need you like never before, God. We're hungry for you. We're thirsting for you. Hallelujah, God. I need an inner dwelling in you. I need you, oh God. I'm spiritually hungry. Hallelujah. I need you to satisfy this quench up on me, God. I need you. Hallelujah. You begin to call out to him. See, his ear is going to come attentive to you. Hallelujah. And the next thing you know, you're going to be in a new place because God hears and loves to hear the praises of his people. God loves to hear you call out for him. He will turn to you, but you got to do it. So what, are, what? why are you dissatisfied? Are you dissatisfied with the company around you? Then get in a new place. Separate yourself from that company. Say, God, is this the company you will have me in? Or is it somewhere else I'm supposed to be? God, or is it me that I need to clean out this temple? And I'm, I'm, I'm being too judgmental. I'm being too critical. Because that's a spirit, amen, that'll make you critical. And I curse that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. That critical spirit on you, that you won't be judgmental, but that you will be soft and subtle and that you will just look It say love covers a multitude of sin, that you will lead with love even when the people are wrong. Love it out of them. I just told you guys in the beginning how I was bad and doing stuff and my mom said, I ain't gonna whoop you for everything and she began to hug me more. She began to kiss me more. It started breaking off some of that stuff and I, by the time I got to high school, I went from in grade school in the office every day to by the time I got to high school, I don't even remember what the office looked like because I didn't never go to the principal office. It changed me as a kid. And my mom wasn't even saved. But that was a principle that she used. Hallelujah. She wasn't even saved. But she said, I got to do something else because I can't whoop this child every day. I can't be yelling at this child every day. Hallelujah. Yes, she spread around and, and listen. Listen, she ain't play, and that's what's going on. So what are you doing? Hallelujah. To be hungry. What are you to be satisfied? Hallelujah. How are you going to satisfy the hunger that's in you? How? Hallelujah. You're going to have to get in the word. Hallelujah. You're going to have to cry out. Sometimes you're going to have to just moan and groan. I tell y'all, sometimes I was going through so much hardship, especially last season. Last year, I went through so much 
Sometimes I, when I didn't understand stuff, I had to just be still and start calling out. And then God would start giving me under wisdom and knowledge of what was going on in my world. God did. People can give you a word, but God says we see in part and we know in part. It's only God that can give us all the word. It's only God that can sustain us. So what are you hungry and thirsty for today? What are you looking for God to change in your life? What are you looking for him to do? Hallelujah. Are you want to be a better father? Are you want to be a better mother? Get in a place and ask God to help you. Do you want to be a better individual? Do you want to you want to feel more joyous? God, I need more joy in my life. So then start telling yourself, listen, we got joy. We got joy, joy, joy. God unspeakable joy. Joy, joy, joy. Just be goofy with it. Be free. Hallelujah. And stop being boggled down with everything around you. God loves you. He's concerned about you. And he wants you to be successful. Hallelujah. He does. Hallelujah. Again, I'm teaching out of my book. Walk with me, Lord. Hallelujah. 30 days to be transformed. This is a book, hallelujah, that came from my journals. Hallelujah. They can... Out of my journals, hallelujah, that I had in my first couple years of walking with the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. So here's your self, here's your uh, evaluation, because that's the teacher in me. Amen. Here you are. Are you satisfied with where God has you? Are you? If you're not, then what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You can't say you're dissatisfied and just stay there and say, oh, I'm not happy. I guess this is what it is. If you do that, then yes, that's what it's going to be. But what are you looking for God to do in your life? If you are not happy where you are, get on your face and ask God for a plan so you can get to where he wants you to be. Write out your desires. Habakkuk talks about this. He tells us, make the, write the vision, make it plain. Ask him. Say, God, this is what I desire. This is what I would like to have. God will give you a plan to get there. Every time he has. Some things I wanted, some things he didn't. How did you think I became Dr. Zolisha Ware? Huh? I was in a physical going to the doctor, going to be a doctor, a primary physician in 2011. Got to my last part, only had 18 months to go. Hallelujah. I would have been done. In the, uh, so it was 2010, 2011 would have been done. I had to go overseas, leave for 18 months. All my children were still in high school. And God, and I remember praying, everybody around me, my, my leadership to my husband said it was okay, go ahead. But God said no. He did. I'll never forget it. N-O. He said, if you go, who's going to take care of your children? I said, oh, my mother-in-law going to come and take care. He said no. Who's going to take care of your children? Those are your children. He said, if you go, who's going to take care of your husband? I said, he'll be all right, God. He, he all right. He, we ain't been together. This dude's going to be okay. This is what I said. I had already made it to me, okay? I had already made my mind up. But then, you know what God did? And God said no. In his exact words, I still remember him today because they burned in me. He said, I'm going to use you in a ma that manner, but not in the same way. So that was my desire to be a physician, actually a heart specialist, cardiologist. That was just the first step. I was going to get my residential over in the Caribbean islands because it was the way you could do it the fastest. Got accepted, had finances. It was paid for everything. Going to do that. For 15 months, I would have been gone. Came back and worked at a hospital here. I was already hired, okay? And then they had already assigned me a doctor that I would have been with, a cardiologist. And I would have had to, to follow him for 12 months. And after that, I would have been able to launch my own practice. God, I had, it was already set up. The world has set it up for me. But God said, no. That's not what I have for you. I'm going to use you because this is what I said to God. I said, God, but I can heal hearts. I can, I can help the people be healthy. He said, I'm going to use you in that manner, but in a different way. I had no idea, no idea that this is the manner he was talking about. That was in 2000. It's 2020 now. 2020. 
He has fulfilled that thing. He told me he was going to give me my doctrine, but he was going to do it in a different way. And he sure has done it. He sure has done it. And he made it simpler. And guess what? My family is intact. My family is intact. My husband is still my husband. My children are still my children. Because what would have happened if I would have left? All the covering they would have got would have been gone. My kids would have been without. I probably wouldn't have been married. You know what I'm saying? Not to him anyway. It would have been different. Hallelujah. They get Hallelujah. I don't know what's going on. She's saying she can't see me on the screen. I don't know. My screen is fine. Everybody else is okay. Glory be to God. One person saying she can't see me on the screen. How about everybody else? I can see you guys fine. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. It might be you. You got to go out and come back in. So that's what I'm saying to you. What are you going to do to satisfy? Next one. Do you understand why he has you there? Do you understand why God has you in the place you're in? Have you asked him? God, why am I here? Why am I going through this? He will tell you. He will show you. He will show you the very purpose of where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. What testimonies have you seen or heard that the Lord has done in your life and others? Are you keeping track of your testimonies? Your testimonies are important. They will help you go. Keep going. Are you tracking them? Are you, are you keeping up with them so when you get in that low place, you have a reference point to go back to so you can keep on? Have you? Glory be to God. Jesus. And if you're not, then let's ask God to do that. Glory be to God. Let me pray over you and give you your decree today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we can go forward. So I pray for each and every last one of you guys that God is going to bless you, that you will listen to this post and come back and let God do something in your life. Amen. Let be satisfied because you know where you're going. Don't get caught up on just where you are, but get caught up in your next and focus on your next. Don't get caught up in what people are saying. Don't get caught up even in your doubt and other people doubt. Get caught up in who God said you are. Get caught up in who he is decreeing in your ear to yourself and speak it over yourself and be patient and diligent and be, and be of good cheer because God is going to work it out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your saving grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I do that, hold on. If you don't know God in a part of your sin, I got to do this. If you don't know him to be your Lord and your Savior, you all you need to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be saved. I have to do that call. I have to do the call for those who have nothing has been prepared for them. Why? Because it's my responsibility to do it. If you are don't know God like you should know him, hallelujah. If you are confused about who he is, hallelujah. If you are in an unrepentant state, I need you to fall on your face and confess with your mouth, Lord, I need you. I cannot make it without you. I've been doing it within myself, God, but I need you to come and be the Lord of my life. I want to take your hand and I want you to lead and guide me. I want you to heal me. I want you to set me free, God. I want you to be my God. You believe that. Hallelujah. Say it out your mouth and believe it in your heart. Hallelujah. You will be saved. And I pray right now that the power of God will hit you right now and that you will cry and share because I can feel it. You will shed those tears. Hallelujah. Of uh, uh, unforgiveness. So God can take you to a new point. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk. We always got to keep our, uh, this is why he tell us to, uh, to every day, every single day. To do what? Examine ourselves that we be found in the faith. Why? Because every single day, hallelujah, every single day, we need to be found in the faith. So every day I get up, I renew my relationship with him. Every day. Because I want to be in constant fellowship. I want to be constantly surrounded by him. I want to be constantly governed with him. Hallelujah. And so do you. I don't care how long you've been saved. Hallelujah. You got to get in that place. So dear Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you for your saving grace. We thank you for not leaving us in the world to fight our own battles.
trials, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the divine connections you have placed around us for support and help, oh God. Lord, allow us, oh God, hallelujah, to look past our past, oh God, and look past our situations and focus on your mighty works, oh God. Hallelujah. We've seen, oh God, the countless times that you've done in our life and other people's life, oh God. God, build our understanding, holy God. Build our understanding, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we are blessed, oh God. And that every spiritual blessing in Christ, as mentioned in Ephesians 1 and 3, hallelujah, comes from you, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, to believe that all things, oh God, and that you will have have to come upon us, oh God. Hallelujah. And every spoken word, oh God, that it will be as so, oh God. Hallelujah. John 6 and 37. Every spoken true and just word, oh God. Hallelujah. And we come against, hallelujah, every word curse spoken over us. We curse it at the root right now. And I ask for a refreshing, refreshing, refreshing upon every single person to see God as he sees them. And they will see themselves the way he sees them. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lastly, Lord, we praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. We praise your wonderful name. We appreciate you, God. We appreciate you, God. Hallelujah, God. For being a God, hallelujah, that is concerned about our people, oh God. Yes, Lord. And we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Now, let me give you your decrees. Decree 1, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, I have life now and eternally because of God's grace. It's not because of anything i done. So I decree and I declare that you have life now, that you have life now, that you have life now, that you have life now. Hallelujah. Externally. Hallelujah. Because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And it's not because of anything that you have done in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians three and 16. It says the Lord of peace is peace. Hallelujah. In every way he always gives me his peace. Hallelujah. So I decree and I declare that the Lord of God is your peace. Hallelujah. In every way. And he always gives you peace in every situation. Glory be to God. And I have one more thing that I'm working on. Everybody know I give an extra thing. Hallelujah. For you participating. I'm going to give you a divine setup decree for today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody is needing that word on today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I come against chest pains. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, just let it go. Hallelujah. Situations that you've been dealing with in your family. Uh, it seems like you've been fighting. Let it go. Hallelujah. That is no longer your portion in the name of Jesus. Let it go. Scream out. I let it go, God. In the name of Jesus, let it go. You cannot fix things. You cannot shape things. God is the only one that can fix it. Hallelujah. So let it go. Things, some things are out of your control. What's out of your control, you give to God. Let him do it. He is the one that can fix it up. And I feel that. Thank you, God. I just felt that turn. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. I don't know who that was for, but I felt it. Hallelujah. Now I feel the lightness. There you go. Hallelujah. Give it to him. It's okay to cry. It's okay to shout. It's okay to tell God, oh God, I thought it was going to be different, but just let it go. Hallelujah. And trust God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Some people I'm hearing, you've been searching for God to hear him more. Hallelujah. You're going to hear him more. Glory be to God. He's waiting on you to get in that quiet place. You've been asking, but you don't get in the quiet to hear from him. Communication is a two way. There's a hear, there is a speaker and a listener, speaker and a listener. So when you speaking, he listening, when he's speaking, you got to listen. Listen means to be quiet and be still. Don't talk. Do you mama tell you when you was a kid don't talk when I'm talking so be still and no talking and let God talk you will hear him that soft still voice you will hear it if you just be still don't talk (laughs) you know what I'm saying sometimes we just he told us about them prayers you don't need to do that 
Just be quiet. Hallelujah. And hear from him. God, I'm, 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 I'm say, Lord, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. And just be, and then let him talk. Hallelujah. It's his turn to talk. That's what I'm hearing. It's my turn to talk. Can you listen? It's my turn to talk. Can you listen? Please. And then when you hear me, can you take heed? Can you do what I tell you to do? My way, not your way, my way. Hallelujah. For your steps are ordered, said the Lord. Can you listen? Hallelujah. And then do what I tell you to do. In the name of Jesus, receive the word of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Let me do this declaration. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna have me going on on here. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare, hallelujah, on this day, a divine setup for each and every person. Hallelujah. They give us hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So we decree right now that you will begin to see the Lord arranging and rearranging, shifting and changing your circumstances for the good. Hallelujah. I say right now that your eyes are open to see that God is at work in your most difficult situation. Hallelujah. I say right now, hallelujah, that you call for a divine revelation to come upon you, enabling you to see the, the major angels around you. Hallelujah. And yourself to be in the very moment caught up and see what God has for you. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare that you are able to see God setting things in order for your life. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare the break of the power of the setback and the decline off of your life. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare and I command every spirit of hindrance and resistance to be bound in Jesus name. I decree and I declare for you to call upon the Lord to make the way so that you can go forward in victory, 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 and that all things shall work out and turn out well. Hallelujah. And right now, hallelujah, I prophesy that you're being divinely set up to prosper and succeed in this very hour in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's something new I'm working on soon to come out. I give y'all little tips, bits of it. Amen. My decrees, my daily decrees. Hallelujah. I write them out and I share them with you in Jesus name. May it bless you. May it keep you and may it have a great work in you. Have a blessed, blessed Thursday. Be joyful. Be excited. Be settled. Be satisfied with what God is doing. And if you're not Ask him so that you will be. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Don't look for the things of this world to satisfy you. But look for the things of God in the spirit to satisfy you. In Jesus name. If you haven't gotten a book. Walk with me 30 days to be transformed. Get it. You need to get it from me. You can get it PayPal. Uh, I have a link down in the bottom. You will see. I have it on. Uh, if you want to get it through Cash App. It's dollar sign. My first and last name. Amen. Hallelujah. It, they went up on the shipping for the book. It's actually, I had to take it up to $30 instead of the $25 because they went up on the shipping. Amen. I don't know. Some UPA, uh, the post office is doing. Hallelujah. So I'm not even selling you to really make a profit off of it. I'm really trying to get it in your hands because I know what it did for me. So I know what it'll do for you. This, by, this book is ordained, amen, from God. And I know it is because he, he had me release it in February. It was the timing. Amen. I wrote part of it a year ago. The rest of it in February, he said, now release it. Amen. So it was ready. It's divine set up. It is for you right now. Hallelujah. So be blessed. Be encouraged. Have a blessed, blessed Thursday. And I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you write down your reflections. Because last Friday, nobody came with reflections. Nobody had reflections when I went under. You need that. You need to keep flat and do your reflections. How are you going to grow? How you going to know where the next pillar is? You got to have them. Tomorrow is day five, our reflection and our direction day. What did we learn this week? What do we need to do? Listen, get in that position. If you don't, you don't take authority or you don't put in the effort to grow, you won't. And that's just simple. You have to decide that you're ready to grow. Hallelujah. And you will in Jesus name. So be blessed. Have a great day. Get your reflections ready. We're going to go over them tomorrow and I'm excited. See you tomorrow morning.